call this meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent prayer for our servicemen and women. Roll call, please. Here. 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 Please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A, minutes of the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority's regular board meeting held on September 19, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, Lackawanna County Planning Commission Subdivision and Land Development Evaluation received September 17, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Tax Assessor's Report Hearing Dates held on October 9th, October 16th, and October 17th of 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes this evening? Uh, two very brief ones, Mr. Rogan. Uh, we did receive a call from Mark Dewar and subsequently spoke to other people at DPW concerning the paved cuts for roads, uh, Mary Street and Oxford, Oxford Court. The first one on Mary Street, there was a serious gas leak and UGI had to replace the main. They will be repairing it curb to curb. Oh, good. The, right. And the other uh, was apparently there were uh, the paving that was done in Oxford Court. They paved over the sewer lids or the lids to access the utilities, and they had to go back and cut them. And then uh, this past Friday, the, the one in particular that I believe the complaint was about has been fixed. Thank you very much. Um, the first speaker on the sign-in sheet tonight is Bill Jackowitz. <clears throat> Good evening, Scranton City Council. Good evening. 7,972 days ago, Scranton was declared a distressed city under Act 47. Reality, not fiction. Congratulations to the winners of the, the election. Condolences to the losers. Will Scranton continue to make the same mistakes, or will cooperation and working together actually happen in Scranton government? The newly elected mayor and city councilmen should be included in the drafting of the 2014 budget and revised recovery plan. One out of every three Scranton registered voters voted. Not too good. Has the 2013 audit been completed? $840,000 fee plus additional bonus to consultants and attorneys who negotiate more borrowing for a city that has been distressed for 22 years. Success or more distress? Arbitration awards, what is the latest information on payment? How much will each individual receive? When will the payment begin? Answer during motions, please. If the city unions take over the city assets in the New York Minute, as promised, would the unions be required to pay taxes on these assets? This may actually help the city out if they have to pay taxes. I have some concerns about the 1% pay your fair share tax that has been proposed. Will all students attending classes in Scranton be required to pay this tax, including Scranton residents who have children attending the local colleges, university, and Scranton school district schools? The majority of Scranton school students' parents do not pay Scranton property tax or Scranton school tax, but yet their children are, children are attending Scranton schools 
on a free ride being, being supported by the Scranton taxpayers. In addition, will, will this fair tax law include people who reside with their parents, relatives, or friends without paying their fair share in taxes also? Some out-of-state college students are working and paying Scranton wage tax, 2.4%, and the 1% school tax, equaling 3.4% wage tax. There are some high school students working and paying the wage tax also. Would they be exempt from the fair share tax? Should get legal opinion from the state attorney general office, the state tax law division, and the U.S. attorney general federal tax law division. We know what the city law department did. They, uh, they said the smoking ban was legal. Remember those days? Let's go to the real people who make the laws, not our local attorneys. Scranton has been embarrassed far too many times in the past. Correct me if I'm wrong, the nonprofits located within the city limits of Scranton own their buildings and equipment, have no problems making payroll, but yet Scranton property is now owned by the city unions, awarded to them, to them by a judge. Scranton made worldwide news by paying employees $7.50 an hour and cannot pay their bills on time. The only improvements being made within the city limits are being made by the nonprofits using their money and developers using tax money. So seriously, do the nonprofits need the city or does the city need the nonprofits? Does anybody really think that after spending $100,000 or more on an education that anybody would stay in Lackawanna County where the per capita income is $24,152 a year, maybe working at one of the malls, Actually, the income in Scranton is lower, $19,068. Why would you stay in Scranton? Finally, FYI, for your information, Scranton residents and elected officials, pay attention, and you people out in TV land, pay attention to this. What could Scranton do with this tax money that is being wasted? Medicare, Part B and Part D paid $23 million for dead patients in 2011, and $29 million for drug benefits for illegal immigrants from 2009 into 2011, right from the Health and Human Services Inspector General. In addition, has reported, it has been reported this past week that 130 million dead people have been paid Social Security benefits. $400 million has been paid out to dead federal retirees plus an additional $170 million paid out to dead military retirees. Dead, dead doctors are still writing prescriptions for Medicare. $60 billion in fraud. Medicare alone, information obtained from the Health and Human Service Inspector General's report. According to the Postal Inspector General, the Postal Service overpaid truckers $61.5 million for their gas. For those of you who do not know what IG means, Inspector General, federal employees inspecting other federal employees and reporting the facts to the people, and the so-called people in charge, elected officials. Yet, some people believe that the government is capable of administering the health care of all Americans. According to Secretary Sebelius, sworn testimony, convicted felons are being hired as navigators to sign people up for Obamacare which means convicted, convicted felons have access to private citizens' personal and private information, including their financial information. That was, she testified to that yesterday. What a country. Vote for the law and then read it later. What could Scranton do with the portion of money that is stolen each year and every day in the United States? Scranton, she could use, sure use those millions of dollars. Good evening, Council. Les Miller, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Good evening. Well, I think Tuesday was a great day for the city of Scranton, and I think we took a step forward to turning this city around. I want to congratulate everybody that won. And finally, I think we elected somebody that, that can work with city council and not fight with them, as uh, has been the case for the last 12 years. And people, I think, just have to be patient. 
because it took 12 years to tear this city down. It's going to take quite a while to build it back up. But I think the people are going to be in place in January that can do that. And uh, <clears throat> finally, we got rid of the elite Green Ridge regime. And uh, that's going to be for the betterment of the city. And uh, I was surprised to see in the paper today that Mayor Doherty called the mayor elect and he's going to have him included in the, the budget talks, which surprised me at first, but I think there's a method to his madness. Because if this budget ends up like most of his budgets did, looking like Swiss cheese, you say, well, the incoming mayor helped out with it too, so we got to blame him. But uh, I, I hope everything works out. I, I hope we do come up with a, with a good budget this year. Uh, lastly, 7C on the agenda. $250,000 for Alexander Spa. How much money are we going to give this place? I mean, there was a loan years ago, and I would, would yeah, more. That's the same, but that's the same loan, Mr. Stumbler. OECD in July 2012 reduced the annual, or excuse me, reduced the monthly payments by half and changed the interest rate from 5% to um, half a percent. And this is the legislation now, 15 months later, approving those changes. So um, we will be, I'm hoping, tabling this issue tonight okay. until um, Ms. Abley is able to come in for a caucus, and I'll talk more about that under motions. Okay. It went from 5% to a half percent? Mm-hmm. So we were losing four and a half percent interest on it. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that was paid even passed. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Good, uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Be very brief tonight. Uh, just like to recap uh, the events that transpired on Tuesday. Uh, by congratulating obviously the winners uh, and also those who uh, may have uh, fallen a little bit short. Um, I do commend those individuals for putting their name on the ballot. Um, I would like to congratulate uh, Mr. Rogan on his re-election to City Council for four more years. Um, to Mr. Joyce, I, uh, I want to congratulate you on a uh, hard-fought campaign. Uh, you should be very proud of yourself. Uh, you offered a lot. Uh, you were certainly uh, a very uh, overqualified candidate uh, for that particular office, and uh, I think you've proven over time, uh, you know, your your talents and assets, or your talents and, and uh, uh, you know intelligence and, and abilities you have, have certainly been an asset to this council for the last four years. And and uh, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, you know we, we certainly uh, haven't heard the last from you, and and uh, you know look forward to seeing you uh, utilize your uh, your uh, attributes, uh, you know, moving forward. Uh, congratulations to uh, Mayor Elect Courtright. Um, you know he certainly knows what he's getting into uh, moving forward. Uh, as a few speakers tonight have already alluded to, it is my hope that we can, can uh, you know continue to uh, you know move forward in a cooperative manner. Um, I do commend the mayor uh, for reaching out to uh, Mr. Courtright and asking him to take part in the budget process. I think that is a very important role for him to play. Uh, this will be his city, uh, you know, very shortly. And so his ideas and opinions and, and suggestions should be incorporated uh, in the 2014 operating budget. Uh, I do feel moving forward that we should invite Mr. Courtright, uh, Mr. Wexler, uh, Mr. Gahan, I believe it is, uh, to a, a caucus and allow them to uh, discuss publicly uh, their thoughts and uh, their vision for the city. Um, the budget that this council does craft uh, will certainly be one that uh, the next administration and council will have to work uh, with. And so I think they should take part in the process. Um, as we've, we, we know, you know, the last uh, four years have been, uh, have been a challenge, uh, particularly the last, the last year and a half. And we know what we've gone through. And, you know, to, to those out there who think the problems are going to be solved overnight, um, I think are a little misled. Um, the challenges are, are going to continue. Um, you know, it's going to take an, an awful lot of work. I think we, we uh, have shown that, you know, the blame game, I think, has been put to bed. Uh, we need to move away from all that, those types of things. The politics has to be put aside. 
um, because you know if we allow that to continue to dictate the decision making uh, you know the city is only going to continue to worsen but I am confident that the individuals coming in um, understand that and they're ready to roll their sleeves up and get to work with input uh, from people around them and I, I only hope moving forward that more citizens come forward and offer their suggestions because as I've said we need input from everyone involved there's not one perfect plan there's not one perfect idea and when we all come together uh, we've proven in the past that we can be successful and uh, I just wish everyone the best of luck um, but before we get to January we know we have a budget to put together with the administration and the council we have in place now certainly gonna be a challenge but uh, I'm confident we'll get through it easily and uh, get ready to move forward thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Andy Spiraglia Andy Sprague, this is Grant and Fels, Grant County. I too would like a little, I was here when we did this the first time around. With, with uh, that loan. But the worst part about the loan, was it done legally? Could she legally do what she did? And if he didn't, can't do it legally, then it's up to you to put her feet to the fire. You cannot control any legal actions done by anyone within the administration, even the council. That's not a way to run the government. I saw people get elected on council who got, they got pensions, and other people that got on council didn't get pensions. And I read the legally on that. And that thing was tossed out for a word. They used the wrong word. But the local uh, courts, okayed it. Why they okayed it, I don't know. They knew darn well it wasn't legal. But they don't have, they're not fair. If a person sits on the sidewalk, he can be arrested. A politician can do whatever he wants, and unless it's grossly, he won't be arrested. He won't even be sanctioned. I'm not going to get into that because there's a lot of legal ramifications in, in the private sector. I know it went to court. There's no question about it. <clears throat> but I want to I wanna thank all the people who won the election. But a dirty word came up in that election too. KOZ. Scranton has many KOZs. They just don't call them a KOZ. We got nonprofits, we got state office building, federal office building, like courthouses, administration buildings. To the taxpayer, they're a KOZ. There's no question about it. Why anybody would think about another KOZ? I think when you said there was like 22,000 people who work outside the city, come to work in the city, I believe that was something close to that. Why would you want another KOZ without having a commuter tax? With a commuter tax, I can see a KOZ. But without a commuter tax, there's no reason for a KOC. All it is is a game of musical chairs. You saw what happened down there, down in Princeton there, with a lot of people that worked in Wilkes-Barre moving into that KOC so they wouldn't have to pay taxes. That's not the way a government should be run. A government should be run where everybody pays their fair share of taxes. And I don't even know what happened with all them homes that we gave KOCs to. How many of them people ran down to the county and try to get their assessment changed. I bet everyone did. And there's no question about it. KOZs do not work the way they are formulated by the legislature. They just don't work. And things have to be done. Stratton, you know, and I know. I don't even want to mention it because I don't want to get upset tonight. What's going to happen with the taxes? And the truth is, the policemen contracts are set, firemen's contracts are set, and the DPW contracts are set. All you do with them unions is make sure you follow the contract. That's it. And that isn't going to help the city at all when it comes to money. Like I said a long time ago, well, not that long ago, maybe two months ago, let the unions have the city assets and lease them back. If you can redu reduce that $21 million borrowing, 
That alone would help you financially. Without it, and what the banks are saying and what I read, they're putting our feet to the coals. Either you take that 100% increase, it was actually higher, but I'll go with 100. You're not going to get the loans. And without the loans, you can't run the government. So, like I say, if they went out and said they put a lien against our assets, let them have them. We can lease them back. And spread that loan over 10 years, that's fair, I think. Most of the police and the civil firemen will still be working in 10 years. But without it, we're going to go down like the SS Scranton. But that has the ability to rise. We don't. We're just going to go down and sink to the bottom of the ocean. You've got to come up with some way to reduce that borrowing. And that, to me, is the only way you can actually do it. Because you were even talking about a can. I won't get into any more on it. Make it upset me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sprague. Dave Dobson. Good evening, Dave Dobson. Good evening. Good evening. Resident. Tax, taxes paid. Fees paid. Not like some people that run for office in this city, but uh, I had a thought with uh, a lot of this tax exempt business, and you know it's it's also like Andy said, state buildings, courthouses. Why can't they combine with city government and lobby the state for compensation? And this should be done statewide because we're taking an awful, awful beating on this. And with KOZs or whatever you want to call them, the one thing, uh, I'd, one thing I'd like to point out, one point I'd like to make is that they don't have to hire one person from the city. General Dynamics doesn't have to hire one person from the city. They can't say you're from Scranton, we don't want you. But they don't have to hire you. And that's the way it is. We live in an at-will state. And uh, I passed, uh, Pat, some Steamtown things. Do you have them there? And I'd like you people to consider before budget time of maybe contacting a few congressmen and so forth. Their entire, almost their entire uh, season with fall foliage was wiped out. And uh, I was on three or four trips near the end of the month. There were no leaves past Moscow to be seen. There were a few nice events uh, at the end of the uh, excursion or in the middle where you get to your destination and stuff. But uh, they were also sold to us by, I would know, the Republican senator. And, and it was uh, a good thing. I, I like, I love Steamtown, but uh, Joe McDade, but uh, uh, quite frankly, their funding is uh, slumped to uh, an, an extremely insufficient level, and they can't keep things going. Uh, now, on Alexander's, at 7C, please table that tonight until you can get those people in. And if they don't want to come in, keep a table. Baloney. Uh, and I have a question for our Scranton Times editorial. What's their answer to unilateral mayoral actions and his designated uh, department heads? Also, the parking authority, unauthorized loans. Uh, what's their answer to it, you know? They, they never came to council to ask for anything, and uh, uh, they just did it. And now, once again, we're stuck with the results. And my bank keeps calling me to lower my interest rate, and I'm almost afraid to talk to them, because I know what kind of sleazes they are. They've been fined billions of dollars, and I don't trust them. I just as soon stay at the percentage I'm at, maybe. Um, OK. We have a golden parrot. We had about a 33% turnout. And the non-voters of Scranton, with all of the uh, all of the issues facing us, uh, two-thirds of the people in this town that were eligible to vote, 
even though we have an absentee ballot, even though we have empty at the polls, there's no lines, no hassle uh, to date. They didn't show up to vote. And certainly, if you're not going to inform yourself, you might as well stay home anyway, because you're just voting for the last sign you saw. Uh, and uh, once again, I have a golden parrot for uh, the welfare states. Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, $3.5 million in farm subsidies uh, to a representative from Tennessee for uh, farm aid. And the typical average of these states are $1.65 for every dollar that they pay out. And uh, by the way, that representative also voted against, voted for cutting food stamps. A uh, half of the children in this country, uh, half of the people that receive food stamp aid are children. So uh, maybe his kids should go to school hungry for a change. I doubt it at $3.5 million subsidies to his farm. Thank you. Maybe you should get another mailbox. We can make it seven. What do you think? Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our sign-in sheet. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Good evening, council. Marie Schumacher, city resident and taxpayer. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, first, I would like to thank all those who ran for office. I know it's not a, a, an easy thing, and um, and I look forward to working with those who um, who were successful. But I've got to tell you, I am uh, I am somewhat disappointed and uh, had the the bucket of cold water thrown on me this morning when I read the paper and saw that um, you know transparency sounds wonderful when campaigns are being run, but. When the campaign is over, reality sets in, and we now know that Mr. Courtright is unwilling to share with the citizens of this city uh, who is going to be on his on his team to select at least the business administrator and maybe other department heads. Um, I don't think that's a very good sign. And Mr. Rogan, um, I can't tell you how little I think about your idea to move the caucuses of the of city council back to the clerk's office it's um they would be open to the public you've been in that room it's not well it but it's only available to the public who physically come it would not be available to the general public who views this on ectv plus it is not um it's not built for it's if you get the five people uh all of you in there it's not and that's my opinion i think it should be out here and uh, and you should meet and I would recommend that maybe you could try to get the the backup materials earlier and have have read them and not be leafing through them while you're sitting up there um, that might help but we need a lot more visibility and and not less so um, again we're eight days away from receiving the budget, and we still have no audit or no, no time, Mr. Joyce? Well, uh, latest is we've received uh, financial statements um, from Rossi and Rossi for the city's management discussion and analysis section of the audit report. Uh, the city of course we'll review these uh, reply back to the auditor and then the final audit will be issued I do have the uh, Scranton Parking Authority's financial statements that was finally completed okay uh, and oh, speaking of the Parking Authority did we get any feedback from the questions that you um, yes do you want me to wait until motions sure. that's okay. fine that's fine uh, and then whatever happened to the caucus that was going to be held with Steamtown partners and what happened to the request that they made that well the uh, the request uh, was tabled I believe I believe so and it remains on the table until such time as they would come in for a public discussion um, however 
there's been no word, no contact from Steamtown Mall representatives uh, regarding that caucus or, uh, or, or the situation. So the ball is in their court. Are we, are we absolutely positive, and maybe this is a question from Mr. Rogan, uh, are we positive that that was not like the Alexander Spa uh, just gone ahead with, without the uh, knowledge of, of counsel? Well, legally, that, that shouldn't be the case. I could ask. Okay, and, and are you going to be presenting during motions tonight the status of all of the, the loans and... We still have not received them from OECD. Um, and I would like also to uh, say I do hope that 7C will be tabled until there's a caucus uh, available. And I'd like to know from uh, Mr. Joyce and maybe Mrs. Evans, how involved have you been in the, the 2014 budget preparation process uh, compared to last year's budget? I've been somewhat involved, but I, I will say that I have not been as involved as in 2013. I, I've spoken to the mayor a few times. I've, well, I've had a few meetings with the mayor. I've had a few meetings with the business administrator. And I have a idea of what's going to be sent down, but I do not know the final numbers. Okay. Um, and you, you do, you're in agreement with what they've done so far? Uh, I can't, okay. can't okay. say I'm in total agreement with okay, everything, I can but. Wait. That's true. They, that's not, that wasn't a fair question because they, they can make changes too before it, before it comes. Um, and then I'd like to ask, how many of you have read uh, at a minimum chapter five of the, uh, which is the proposed legislation section of the local government task force report that was issued in the middle of October? No. No. Yeah, I again I, I brought this up last week because of the one element which is the uh, the alcohol tax for the city residents or city establishments um, I would hope that you would read it and and again respond before that piece of legislation is voted on at least to our three uh, representatives that represent the city of Scranton because I, I think it's important, and I'll be talking more about that in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, City Council. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Tom Lufarski, and I would like to congratulate Mr. Rogan. Thank you. And Mr. Joyce, I'm sure you would have made a fine tax collector. Thank you. I see on the agenda where we're going to give the Scranton Parking Authority $420,000. Is that correct? That is correct. Has the Parking Authority sent in their budget for last year? No. No? No. Is that $420,000 the final payment for the year? It's part of the final payment for so the year. So we will still probably owe another 420000 correct? No. No. Any idea how much we will? Um, actually, the December 1st bond payment is eight thousand five dollars or eight eight hundred five one hundred and ninety three dollars and seventy five cents and it's all interest the total amount needed from the city is six hundred and forty three thousand seven hundred and twenty two dollars and thirty seven cents um, it is made up of Two hundred and thirty-three thousand seven hundred and twenty-two thirty-seven, which is the balance from the one point nine million dollar line item in the twenty thirteen budget, and an additional four hundred and ten thousand that was discussed by Mr. Washoe, 
when he attended a council caucus several months ago. At that time, I think he indicated um, he would need an additional three to $500,000, but he couldn't give us a firm number until November. And so he has now provided us with these numbers. Now, that doesn't sound too good, but is there any way we can tie that amount of money into them providing their budget to us? I, I don't believe so. I don't think so parking, either. The parking authority, um, for all intents and purposes, doesn't operate any longer. Uh, the garages are managed and operated by uh, standard parking. And they are overseen by a receiver, Mr. Mike Washo. Well, we have <coughs> someone running the authority getting paid $100 an hour. I think he should be able to provide some kind of a budget for us. But no matter. And as far as Alexander's, what recourse do we have to OECD providing this reduction in interest and the extension of the loan? Is there anything that will happen to OECD? Or are they just going to get away with it? Well, the, the legislation can be voted down by council or, or amended. But what happens to OECD? Well, that would... The, the I mean, they did it without council's yeah. permission. Well, either, either the mayor or the, the head of OECD, Ms. Abley, could terminate or, or punish those who um, didn't follow the proper procedure in this case. But council, unfortunately, doesn't have the power to, to hire or fire. So any public official, as Bill Jack was said earlier this evening, can just do anything and get away with it. I thank City Council anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who cares to address Council? 5A, motions. Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions? Not at this time, thank you. Councilman Rogan? Yes, very briefly. Um, I would like to first start off by thanking the voters of Scranton for selecting me for another four years on City Council. Um, received 10,299 votes and, and I, I wish I could thank each one of you individually because it, it means the world to me um, getting your stamp of approval for the work that I've done for, for the past four years. And I would also like to congratulate my colleague, Mr. Joyce, on a good campaign. Thank and you. I, would, I would also like to congratulate um, our mayor elect Bill Courtright, and I'm very confident that he will be the right person to lead the city for the next four years. And I'm very much so looking forward to working with the mayor hand in hand, unlike um, what we've seen under the previous administration. Um, just one comment that was brought up, which was regarding um, having caucuses. Um, we aren't referring to when we have a group in. For, for instance, when we have Linda in and when we have um, Alexander's in to discuss an issue on the agenda. Um, wh what these caucuses would be, and, and the way this transpired was Mr. McGough brought the idea up to me six months ago or so of bringing back caucuses next year. Um, this is something that previous councils have done to discuss po proposed amendments that may be made on the floor at the meeting. Um, just our thoughts on the legislation. <laughs> And what it can do is it can make the public portion of the meeting much more seamless, where instead of bickering back and forth for, for a half hour because we don't understand one another or we weren't able to get in touch with each other beforehand, um, we could put our, our ideas out. And if we disagree, you know, we, we disagree. If we agree, we do. And, and a lot of different things can be worked out. We could talk about what we're going to discuss um, at the meeting. So it's something that, that I think is a good idea, um, and they would be open to the public. And when we have large issue-oriented caucuses, they would still be conducted in council chambers just as, as they are today. Um, regarding item 7C, I will be making a motion to table that until a caucus can be arranged. 
And that is all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Wascom, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, thank you. Bless you. Uh, just briefly, as Mr. Jackowitz said before, I would like to congratulate all the victors and, as he said, condolences to the losers. But uh, if you read the uh, Times editorial the morning after the election, it sounds like it should be the other way. Condolences to the winners and uh, congratulations to the losers. But, uh, you know, we all have a daunting task ahead of us, and I think everyone is ready to pursue that task. I'm looking forward to working with, with my colleagues here. Uh, I congratulate Mr. Joyce on a fine campaign. It was a nice, clean campaign, and, uh, you know, he was going up against some, some odds with uh, party registration and stuff, I would say. But um, I think there's a bright future ahead for Mr. Joyce. And again, I think there's a bright future ahead for our city. So I hope uh, you do see progress. And uh, I believe we can all work together to, to solve our problems. Again, it's not going to happen overnight. We didn't get this way overnight. Uh, we're going to continue the fight that we have started and, uh, and straighten things out. And I'm just looking forward to a positive new year. And secondly, I did receive a letter in my mail regarding uh, a question from a city resident on open burning. They're having a problem with their neighbors uh, burning all the time. Yes, there are regulations on open burning in the city. Uh, we had mentioned it from this day several times. Um, the only open burning is for cooking, grills and stuff like that. Now, if you do have a small outdoor, uh, you could have a gas fire pit, which is not obtrusive. It doesn't let off smoke. Uh, we did say that uh, sometimes those little chimney fireplaces are okay as long as the smoke is directed away from any neighbor's homes. Once it affects, and our homes are so close in the city, but once it affects a neighbor, uh, at that point, it's a nuisance, and it is illegal. So if you continue to have problems, I read in the letter that the fire department was there. They should have warned the party. But uh, you can continue to call the fire department, and most importantly, call the police. There are ordinances. They can cite the person for the open burning and the nuisance, and, uh, and hopefully that will resolve it. But if you have any further questions, uh, don't hesitate to contact me here. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Joyce, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Yes, I do. Um, tonight, I would first like to begin um, by congratulating some of our newest elected officials. First, I'd like to begin by congratulating um, our new mayor, Mr. Bill Courtright. Uh, he's a, a fine man, and I am sure and certain that he will do a good job for the city of Scranton. Second of all, uh, I would like to congratulate my opponent, Mr. Bill Fox, in the tax collector race. He ran a very clean campaign, as did I, and I'm sure that he will do the tax office well. And also, I would like to congratulate the winners of the council race. Uh, Mr. Pat Rogan, who I've been a colleague with for almost four years. Uh, Mr. Bill Gahan and Mr. Joe Wexler. And also the winners of the school board race. Um, Mr. Cy Dwyhe, Mark McAndrew, um, Bob Sheridan, and Last but not least, Rob Casey. I'm sure that they'll bring uh, their ideas and fresh insights to the school board and, and seek to improve the board in as many ways as they can. Uh, second of all tonight, um, I did want to talk a little bit about the budget. Uh, as you know, I've been involved somewhat in this year's budget process. I've been informed by the mayor of some things that he'd like to do. Uh, some things that he wouldn't like to do. And um, I spoke with the business administrator as well. Uh, this is the first time I'll say this in the years I've been on council is that for this budget, I will not propose any amendments 
to the budget that is sent down. This is primarily for the simple fact that I will not be here to see them through. I will, however, uh, invite um, my colleagues, especially the ones that will be here for the next two to four years, if not more, to present amendments. And I'm very, I'm, I'm also very pleased that the mayor did reach out to uh, Bill Courtright and offered to bring him in to discuss the budget as well. And I actually did place a call into uh, Mr. Courtright and told him that I would be happy to meet with the mayor and um, our mayor elect to uh, see that a budget is formed that is in approval with the mayor elect. I remember that one of the main frustrations I had uh, being a new elected official, and especially the finance chair, is being handed over a budget that I had no control over. So I would like to see um, our newly elected officials have more control over that budget since they will be the ones that will oversee it. I will be happy to offer any advice, input uh, as far as legality of you know, tax or taxation methods, revenue sources, fees, et cetera. Um, but I will not personally make amendments to it that I will not be able to personally see through. And I will be happy to um, cast my affirmative or negative vote based on whether the uh, budget that, the final budget with any amendments is realistic or not realistic in, in, that, in the case where I would vote no. Because one of the um, main issues here is the 2014 tax anticipation note. And in order to obtain that 2014 tax anticipation note, which will be vital in making sure that expenses at the beginning of the year are paid as well as the employees are paid, one of the conditions is that the budget does have to be approved by the lender and they have to be confident in that budget. So I will cast my vote in the affirmative or negative manner based on how I see that budget being in the eyes of the lender. Um, to conclude tonight, we did receive a copy of the uh, city's 2012 financial statements, uh, which will be used for completion of the city's management and discussion and analysis section of the audit report. Uh, we also received the financial statements from the Parking Authority from 2012. Uh, with this in mind, once the city conducts uh, the management discussion and analysis section, um, the audit will be uh, completed and the final version will be available for review. And finally tonight, we did receive an update from Northeast Revenue uh, from October 1st to the 31st. Uh, Northeast Revenue has er, collected uh, roughly $100,000 in delinquent property taxes and also $231,770 in delinquent refuse bills. And I did read in the paper uh, today that of course, with the uh, new um, mayor, uh, there, there becomes the opportunity to uh, appoint new department heads. And I, I sincerely hope that um, a complete evaluation of all the department heads uh, is, or is carried out because I will say this, in working uh, with the administration over the past four years, there are some people in the administration that do put forth a good effort and do do a good job, and I think that they should stay. And that's all I have to say for tonight. Thank you. Good evening.
In response to a citizen's request, City Council sent a letter to Mr. Mike Washoe on November 1st, 2013, regarding repairs to two parking garages. Thereafter, Mr. Washoe contacted Mrs. Crake and stated that the City of Scranton is responsible for all repairs. However, as each of us is aware, the City is not in a financial condition to provide any funding. Rather, it would appear that garages should be closed, particularly since some of the garages do not operate daily at full capacity. Nevertheless, those decisions will be made by the new administration. In addition, Republic Parking responded to Ms. Schumacher's questions regarding parking, and I'll read their email at this time. Number one, we are almost through with the labeling of the meters. The downtown core was finished last week, and we only have a few outlying areas to complete. Will definitely be completed by November 8th. Uh, he apologizes for not updating us sooner. Uh, they simply had a label created specifying Monday through Friday, and it has been placed by the hours of operation on each meter. The photos that the license plate recognition vehicle captured can be archived for whatever time period specified. It is set up normally to default to a 90-day time period. Uh, Republic has requested, however, that the time period be adjusted to 180 days to accommodate Pennsylvania magisterial court processes. So I hope that um, provides the answers that citizens were seeking. Uh, I'd like to I'd like to commend Republic Parking for its accountability, transparency, cooperation, and diligence in its management and operation of the city's on-street parking program. Further, Republic's management has continuously and successfully increased program revenue. Next, OECD Director Linda Abley was unable to attend a public caucus which had been scheduled for this evening. The caucus will be rescheduled for November 21st, 2013 at 5.30 p.m. in order to discuss the terms of a 2007 loan granted to Alexander Salon. In addition, the related resolution in question will be tabled during seventh order this evening if council members are in support of doing so. Also, I'd like to congratulate the winners of Tuesday's general election for both city and county offices and thank all the candidates for their hard work, time, and positive campaigns which, drew, which addressed vital issues of concern to taxpayers. And uh, on a final note, I know Ms. Schumacher, you had posed a question regarding the budget. I have spoken with the mayor weekly uh, regarding his proposed budget. Um, I had inquired if Pell were involved in the process, and the mayor responded just to the extent that um, state-related issues are involved. Um, I can say that, you know, we had, well, some of us had many ideas to generate much-needed revenue and to save money and those being specifically the commuter tax, health care consortium, city-owned and operated storage yard, pilots from large nonprofits, among others. Sadly, none were pursued due to complaints from our neighboring communities who utilize not only our city services, but also 
the many county, state, and federal office buildings, as well as universities and healthcare facilities located in Scranton. Lack of cooperation from the county commissioners, specifically with regard to pilots and the healthcare consortium. Towers complaints and the lack of administrative action and I think that relates specifically to the pilot payments as well. Um, I think most of you know that I railed against excessive city borrowing and parking authority borrowing for many years, even before each of my colleagues was elected. Predicted that the financial house of cards would tumble down and was mocked by former colleagues and endlessly attacked by the newspaper. And when the financial collapse occurred, I chose to work cooperatively with the administration to address the problems and keep our city afloat, but once again was mocked by Summit Council and attacked by the newspaper, neither of whom offered solutions. So now, I, I think it's time for the mayor, and particularly the mayor-elect and seated council members who will remain, as Mr. Joyce said, for the next two, four, or more years to work together to produce a 2014 budget, or those same seated council members to work together to amend the budget if necessary because they will be in positions of authority to oversee the budget borrowing and spending next year and it is their ideas that must be included in the 2014 budget i agree with uh, my colleague mr joyce since neither of us will have the opportunity to oversee that budget, we should perhaps take a step back and allow those who will to do the job. And uh, I also agree with Mr. Joyce that it's very important for the mayor-elect to be involved because, uh, you know, I'm sure it's troubling to be saddled with a budget that is produced by, by others. And so it is my deepest hope that Mr. Courtright will work with Mr. Doherty and my colleagues throughout the next week and produce a budget that they feel is feasible for next year as well as realistic. And uh, that's it. 5B, amending file of council number 77, 2012, an ordinance entitled General City Operating Budget 2013 by transferring $410,000 from account number 0140113090 non-departmental operating expenses dash contingency to account number 0140115319 non-departmental expenses dash operating transfer debt service dash Scranton Parking Authority to provide for the Scranton Parking Authority debt payment due December 1st, 2013. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6A. Reading by title, file of council number 52, 2013, an ordinance authorizing that the receipt of any funds from the charge schedule, which is Exhibit A, to the contract between the City of Scranton and the 15 authorized towing businesses 
which was approved by ordinance file of council number 50 2013 as amended be deposited into special city account number 02229550 entitled public safety police grants which was created by ordinance file of council number 21 2004 You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have been so moved. 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Finance, for adoption, file of council number 51, 2013, transferring funds from fund 04, City of Scranton Parks and Recreation account which funds and account are no longer needed for the conduct of city business and abolishing and closing said account and transferring the funds remaining in said account to the PNC general funding checking account listed below. What is the recommendation of the chair for the committee on finance? As chairperson for the committee on finance, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Rogoff? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, resolution number 44, 2013, ratifying and approving the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton Police Department to the Office of Justice Programs, bulletproof vest partnership for the purchase of new ballistic vests for Scranton police officers and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to accept the grant and disperse the grant funds in the amount of $36,361.76 for the purchase of the vest. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Rogoff? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7 be le legally and lawfully adopted. 7C, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, resolution number 45, 2013, amending resolution number 144 of 2007, entitled Authorizing the Mayor and other appropriate city officials of the City of Scranton to enter into a loan agreement and make a loan from the Commercial Industrial Revolving Loan Program, project number 150.9, in an amount not to exceed $250,000 to Alexander Salon and Spa, Incorporated, to assist an eligible project. By authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials of the city of Scranton to execute and enter into a modification extension of the loan agreement between the city of Scranton and Alexander Salon and Spa. I would like to make a motion to table item 7C. Second. Second. And, and a question? And as discussed, this, is, this will be tabled until we could schedule a caucus. And if, depending on the outcome of the caucus, either approve, deny, or um, reach some sort of middle ground on this legislation. All those in favor of tabling item 7C signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.